You are now checked in to Stand Up New York Labs. Oh, yeah. Hey, Mark, fake banter for the intro. That's all I know how to do. Great. Good to be here. Welcome to Tuesdays with... Stories. Hit her in the face with a surfboard. And then the duck fell out of his bag. <laughs> Surf's up. And she didn't even flush. Knock, knock. Who's there? Mark Norman and Joe List. Yeah! This is Tuesdays with Stories, everybody. No, oh, that's terrible. This is supposed to be cheesy. My radio is spitting at me. Hey there. Uh, hey, do we have a name for our fans, Mark? Tuesdays with stories or... <laughs> uh, how about Tuesday Axe? No? Anyways. All right, Two well... stores. <laughs> Two stores? Nah, uh, I hate it. Let's not right. do it. It's very pretentious. Yeah. Um, so, hey, here's... A, this is a, I think this is the first time we've ever done had like a little intro for an episode. This episode coming up that you're about to hear, we have uh, Joe DeRosa and Gary Veter, I believe, as guests. This was actually the first episode we recorded... We didn't know what we were doing, as opposed to now we got a really good thing happening. Anyways, um, it was the first episode we recorded, and uh, things were a little tense between Joe DeRosa and I, and they really sort of heated up. Well, it was think, it was the end. standard, you guys going at it, ball busting, and then it got escalated. Yeah, it got uh, sort of real, and uh, it got weird. and uh, You made fun of his act, and that's really what set it off. Yeah, well, it's, I made fun of a thing that I didn't think he considered part of his act, but it it, it is, I yeah. guess. Yeah. Anyways, after the episode, I called him, and we had a, uh, a nice talk, and uh, we exchanged I love yous and apologies and went over sort of our uh, feelings. So we don't want to uh, have everyone concerned. We're, we're close friends now, although we haven't talked since the apology, but uh, we're friends. But you know, that's how comics are. You go yeah. months without talking. Yeah. But you guys have always been buds. Yeah, yeah, we're buds, and so uh, it gets a little heated. So this is sort of a different special episode, and I think we refer to it as the first episode a few times. Yes, it's, it's good to hear. Yeah, it's the first one we recorded. I think the show is uh, better now than it was then, so it's sort of a little treat. It's like yeah, a, we were learning, and also there's a uh, if if you hear someone whispering off to the side, that's uh, our other guest Gary Veter, who said right. nothing the whole show. Yeah, he so, was uh, don't mind him. Very quiet. So uh, enjoy the show, and um, and uh, I, I also want to apologize for my behavior. I think at some point I was probably an asshole to Rose. I apologize to him personally, but I could see that. I'll apologize to the uh, listener, I guess, as well. And I think he's got a lot of fans. He sure does. So don't hate Joe. List. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know. I think we have some mutual fans. I'm sure you do. So. Um, yeah, so this is the episode. It's the first, our first crack at it, and uh, thank you for listening, and uh, I appreciate it. It wasn't my idea to release this. All right. I oh, we you. gotta release it. You're gonna love it. Have fun. Bye. Is that good enough? Before the TV show, I went out to Sarah's house to do the podcast. I did that to you. We're running a show. I'm gonna sit there for my 15 show. minutes and sweat. Can but you this fucking is fucking make your knee not visible, please. This before is, you finish whatever. This is how you do that, just so you know for the future. This is how you do that. You guys do that on your own time, and then you bring us in, and you do our thing, and you edit it together. That's what you're supposed to. That's what Marin does. Marin doesn't make the guy sit oh, there for 15 it's minutes. Oh, what Marin does. We have to do what Marin does. <laughs> I mean, you know. Yeah, he also wears dumb shorts and kvetches, I'm sure. So this guy going after Marin. <laughs> He's, going to He's going after the king of the podcast. <laughs> oh, oh, I thought you were talking about We have Marin. to do it like Marin. I didn't say you have to. I'm just saying that's the way most podcasts do it. They do the intro separately. Well, we might do an intro separately, all right? I'm just telling you what we're doing now, you so this guy. Chief. So I could chime I get in. so wound you want up. Me to chime in? Uh, yeah, chime in. I'm Thank chiming. you, Gary. You're a great guest and a good friend. Uh, and I appreciate you keeping your knees under the table. That's his definition of a friend. Somebody does whatever he wants. Oh. It's a real nice oh. definition of no, a friend. someone that appreciates uh, uh. and understands that it's someone else's show. You fucking That's fine. I just appreciate it. I drove an hour and ten minutes to get here. I don't really appreciate traffic. it. I don't ah, appreciate it. I'd be enjoying it. myself more. Say you don't. You this is a great pod. You swollen Egyptian. <laughs> <laughs> I got nothing. <laughs> don't hold back on Hey! <laughs> Hi, Mark. Good to have you. Hey, Mark. Boy, good to be here. Welcome to... Tuesdays with Stories, everybody. Welcome yes. to Tuesdays with Stories. I'm Joe List. That's Mark Norman here. Yeah. The and premiere episode. This is the premiere episode. Numero uno, baby. Number one. I don't know how to say number one in the other languages. Do we know any other ones? Uh, no. No. 
I thought I had a French. Well, that's the end of the episode. Yeah, there it is. Well, we're here. Uh, we're here. This is Tuesdays with Stories with uh, Mark Norman and Joe List, and uh, we're here with uh, a couple of comedians, and we're we're just gonna find out what we did this weekend. Yeah, that's the whole thing. I bumped into you a few times, and uh, a lot of comedians have a lot of good stories, especially on the weekends. And you never get to hear about them. We share them at diners and at comedy clubs, but at the the public needs to hear them. They're hilarious. Yes, the entire public is yes. gonna listen to this. All of it. All the public. So, uh, well, Mark, what did you do this week? Let's get right into it. Oh, boy. Uh, well, you know, New York City, hot show, uh, hot shows Friday. Had four shows Friday. <laughs> yeah. Jumping all over. I uh, did a show at Beauty Bar at 8, then Otto Shrunken Head at 8.30, New York Comedy Club, and Jimmy's number 43. Oh, all right in the same area. Yeah. Uh, Where's Jimmy's number 43? Uh, 7th and 2nd Avenue. Oh, all right. Well, that sounds fun. Every show is brutal. Oh, see, yeah, <laughs> that's good to hear because I, I, I had a brutal weekend as well. Uh, we, uh, so we should maybe mention that there's other people sitting here with us. Oh, of course, sure. Yes, we don't get in a big fight. We get in a little bit of a fight pre-recording. I thought you guys yeah. were going to do 15 without us. Yeah, no. no, I said you chime in while we're doing I it. I thought you said don't chime in. There I other... said do chime in, you fucking oh. idiot. <laughs> oh, well, then that's the mix-up. That's oh, where the mix-up yeah. We were arguing yeah. about a different thing. I didn't really know. Yeah, I thought What's you were saying do? sit there and don't chime in while we talk I for said, 20 minutes. No, he said chime in, I said don't wait for us to introduce you. Just chime in. Oh, I thought you were saying I, don't. Oh, so we had an That's argument why. for no reason. And you really shat on his knee. Well, yeah, I mean, you're coming at me about my knees. <laughs> that hit home. That his knee. <laughs> no, I just, I just didn't understand why my knee was. <laughs> I thought that was strange too. Joe yeah. DeRosa is here, everybody. Joe right. DeRosa, you know him from. What do they know you from? You Cali give your Central. own credits. A couple specials. You know, some acting credits. You have more than one special? Two. Got two. Just oh, did one. Uh, Louis, Bored to Death, you know, some yeah, nice yeah. teeth. couple albums. Got a third album coming out in uh, September called nice. You Will Die. Oh, fun. Very excited about that. Yeah, We Will Die. And, um, uh, yeah. Joe DeRose, a wonderful uh, comedian, good friend. And uh, he's wearing shorts that was sitting in a way that much of his lower thigh, knee cap, and a bit of the, the beginning of the shin was showing, and it's very oh, nice. pale and just... <laughs> Covered in pubic hair. It's not even leg hair. It looks like pubic hair. And That's usually what happens when you wear shorts. They expose the leg. I will say that would be bad news on a plane. Like Why is if it? I was sitting next to you on a plane, I'd, that would be a rough one. Why but is that? You don't well, wear, sh you don't wear shorts on a plane. You, you com shouldn't wear shorts on You commented to me when we were going to Vancouver about my shorts. Yeah. Or about my pants, actually. I was wearing pants, but you just yeah. didn't like how I was dressed. No, no, and that, no. That stuck with me. I don't wear those pants on a plane anymore. Well, you're wearing overalls. <laughs> so you don't want leg out next to you on the plane? I don't mind some leg, but that's a lot of thigh. Or a female leg. Well, it's just the way I'm kind of sitting oh, right now. All right, maybe that's it. Shorts are riding up a little bit, and I don't really care. I feel good. Nah, now, I, I, know it didn't, I know it didn't happen this weekend, but do you have a traumatic story about a leg? On a List, I mean, I feel the fine, the same about you, and that's before the herpes. Oh. We don't have to see my herpes. You're I mean, welcome to if you'd like to. I'm just to. saying, like you know, <laughs> you got this fucking Larry David body that you walk around with. <laughs> Let's just iron out this intro at uh, the yeah, beginning yeah, just so we know, because yeah. that came out of hell. Uh, it, was bad. it wasn't even bad a bat out of hell. It was a pigeon. All right. so, it was a pigeon into hell. Yeah, so, uh, Shitting everywhere. You know, I think we had a little more gusto. Hey, yeah, gusto. all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tuesdays gusto. with stories, everybody. Thanks for having me. Joe List, I got Mark Norman. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to really nail this one. All right. This is going to be exciting. And we'll get right into these numbskulls. Yes. And then we'll start with your weekend. Okay. We'll yeah. introduce them. Now, am that, I embellishing on these shows, or should I do Because I didn't know how much to go Whatever you think. All right. All right. All right. Yeah. Are we are we good? We're rolling. Hey everybody, my name is Joe List, and this is Tuesdays with Stories with Mark Norman here, and I'm Joe List, and we're here. This is our first episode, so premiere pod. We're very exciting. It's a PP premiere pod, and uh, if you if just real quick, we'll, we'll let you know how the show works. It's uh, called Tuesdays with Stories. We're recording it on a Tuesday. And uh, we're going to find out uh, what each other did this weekend. we got some friends here. We're going to talk about their weekends. Comedians have uh, very exciting lives, I think, right? Yeah, we work pretty much all weekend. That's the big big end of the week. That's when all most of our shows are. And something crazy inevitably happens. And uh, the public needs to hear about it. This, this is a fun experiment because we think we have very exciting lives. But we may be about to find out that we just have shitty, boring lives just like everybody else. But we ah, think we're special. I don't know. The drinking, the women, the city, New York, different rooms, different crowds. I'm I agree. There. I agree. There. I think we have an exciting life. And speaking of exciting lives, two great guests. Great guests. Why don't we in both introduce the person we're friends with? <laughs> uh, <laughs> that sounds good to me. What <laughs> Well, that, that was Joe DeRosa right there. Joe DeRosa, everybody. No, no, Mark's supposed to introduce me. I know, but then I felt bad because you get sad. You don't, you don't, I don't get sad. I like that you think that you bear some sort of emotional weight on my life. <laughs> I but, do respect how this doesn't get to you. 
I like that. It doesn't. He's a cunt. Yeah. He's been a cunt since I've ever met him. <laughs> well, we got the C-word out pretty quick. Yeah, yeah, first episode, this is how we do it. Yeah. Uh, uh, but no, this guy's always, he's always jabbing at me, taking his little shots. But it's, yeah. it's from love. I love, I love I you. I don't believe you. This is, is it, this is uh, what I have, this is what I have with, uh, uh Kelly Fastuca, a friend, where she, wow. we do yeah, busting yeah, balls. You and compare me to Kelly Fastuca? Yeah. I'm, actually, I'm comparing <laughs> me to Kelly Fastuca in this situation. Which I'm is, more offended you brought her up than the cunt. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Well, you offended by the cunt word? Well, I just... You know, let's get a minute in. <laughs> well, what do you, what do you, what do you, you know? Come yeah, on, Mark. Right. My you, mom's listening. You're sitting here talking about what a wild life we live. You're getting offended by the C word all of a sudden? I mean, I'm not offended. Yeah. I'm just worried about Grandma June. <laughs> well, you know, you know, don't let your grandma listen to this. <laughs> Jew or June? June. Oh, June. Is, yeah. yeah. Really? Uh, anyway, good to be here, guys. Yeah, yeah, thanks, thanks for, for having coming. us. Joe DeRosa uh, has an album coming out. and uh, we're gonna do, We do our plugs at the beginning in this show. Uh, yes. My album comes out, uh, I think, late September. It's called You Will Die. It's a double album, and I hope you purchase it. A double album? Well, what? one one album, w- the first disc is the show, is what it's supposed to be. Uh, and then the second disc was an attempted recording of the show when the whole audience was drunk, and it was just 60 minutes of me battling a drunken Wow, audience. that sounds People cool. love that shit. Yeah, yeah I, I, I've been kind of putting stuff out like that in incre- incrementally over the years. And, and then I did Scott Moran's uh, internet show. Um, oh, right, right, yeah. right. Uh, about the the PBS thing about the comics and uh, modern comedian and uh, anyway that my whole episode ended up being about that inadvertently so I was like you know what this is a blessing in disguise that right. this train wreck of a show got recorded perfect so uh, anyway yeah hopefully you had a train wreck this weekend but before we get to that we have another <laughs> guest here who's very quiet he's very shy he's very small cute as a button he's adorable he's hilarious he has no albums no credits and nothing uh, <laughs> he has nothing except once this comes out. He was on the premiere episode of Tuesdays with Stories. Uh-huh. That's, that's, big, big, yeah. that's a big intro. Gary Veter is here, everybody. Thank you. I pre- <laughs> wonderful, wonderful comedian and Let me friend. Say one and, applause. And of course, uh, Mark Norman and I'm Joe List. And well, I don't know who we should start. Everyone seems to have exciting stories. Everyone's judged, but I guess it's our show. So, what, what, did, uh, what did you do this weekend, Mark? I uh, had a wacky weekend. This wasn't your traditional. On the road? No, stayed in the, in city, the city, which is rare for me. Usually, I'm out there, but. Uh, yeah, four shows Friday, mm-hmm. and it just worked out because we've all. It's that magical thing where I had New York Comedy Club first at seven, and then Fourteenth Street show, Fourteenth Street show, Seventh Street show, all on the way, all on the east side. Ah, that was Seventh out. Street. Jimmy's number forty three. You know that oh. cute little room? It's in the back of a bar. <laughs> it's very cute. Yeah, yeah, it's a nice restaurant up front there. They have yeah. much fancier food than you'd expect to find yes. at a place that's comedy in the back. Right. The show was horrific. Yeah, but yeah. it was just one of those packed shows where nobody could get a laugh. They uh, didn't geez. want to be there, and, you know. Just ended up going like, "What's wrong? Do you guys hate me?" It was one of those. Oh, I, I had I had similar <clears throat> shows like that also in the city, but I had the one where uh, everyone's killing, and they're like, "They're great," and then you go up and just bomb. Oh, right. that's the worst. Yeah. I had like yeah. three of those in a row. Ooh, well, but that I had means them. It's you. Yeah, I think it might have been. Well, <laughs> I also was had the spot that's after they get the checks, uh-huh. so they're paid, and it's one of those clubs that. Uh, They've realized that they've been ripped off. They've been We're, duped. And they've all been duped, and they're bummed out. And right. then uh, it's my job to be like, AIDS. Right. There's a uh, lot of those in the city. Yeah, yeah, there is a lot the of The dupers. Yeah, they're tough. Yeah. They can be tough. I've. Uh, yeah, It sounds like a snotty thing to say, but I, I don't mean for it to be. It's just you, you have to, at some point, get selective about the shows you agree to do. Because, guess, you know, right. yeah. you'll, you'll travel – you know, across town, and it takes you an hour, or whatever, and you get somewhere, and there's like four people. It's right. Like, it's it's kind of hard to figure out that balance of like, well, I'm not going to be too good for anything, but at the same time, I need to make sure your show actually is it. established right. to some extent. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, because uh, those are the worst, man. Oh yeah, but don't you feel like you maybe get a little something out of it? Uh, you know, there's four people, but I got them. I got it to work, and I got a good riff in. And... Well, that's that's what you want, but sometimes you have it where you're like, I didn't get a fucking line out of that. Yeah. I didn't right. try a new. I right. didn't get time. a fan. Yeah. Nobody looked like they wanted to have sex with me. I didn't right. get a free drink. Yeah. I just well, wasted I think, all my time. I think you have to like uh, almost like control your bomb, so like you know that uh, maybe that uh, show is going to be bad. But you had a string of awesome shows, so it's always good to do something like that. Like go to a place that might be a little bit rough, right? And but, but then you, you don't want to do that consecutively. You know, because going then it's in. Gonna, you're going to get in your own head, right? And right. then when you have a big show, you're like, "Am I going to be able to do this?" Uh huh. Yeah. That's a good right. point. I had the one at Beauty Bar where uh, the guy's like, "Can you go up first? And I was like, "Sure, sure." And it was dead. There was no one there. And then I, as I was getting off, 
20 people walk in. And I'm like, ah. That, mm-hmm. I, I had right. that at uh, Irish Exit, which is uh, yeah. Gary's show. I was on stage, and people were just walking in. Like, the show was becoming better. Yes. While I was on stage. Right. It's not going to be right. good while it's going to be yeah, good yeah. right after I have you. to yes. eat a dick so everyone else can be. I was like, you know, Christopher Columbus or Rosa Parks or one of those two. There you go. Yeah, that's always, uh, that's always tough when you watch it improve as right. you're closing. <laughs> People appreciate oh, yeah. that, by the way, the comparison to Rosa Parks. They, <laughs> they find that. Uh, it's a fair comparison. It works. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. I don't know. But do you, I, I don't think, I think you get to a point, though, where you, I used to really get a lot out of, like, like when, I, when I came to New York, the Boston Comedy Club was still here. And that was like sort of my home club in New York or whatever uh-huh. you want to call it. And um, I would, uh, you know, I I'd get on really late because I was new in town and all that stuff. And you go up for four people. Two of them didn't speak English, literally, you know. And at the time, I got a lot out of that. You know, you really took a lot of lumps and bruises and everything like that. And But eventually, it's it, it gets to a point where you're like, there's nothing I can get out of this show. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, right. If the crowd is too rowdy and too drunk, you're like... I already know how to babysit an audience. This is pointless. I don't need to exercise this muscle again. I already know how to do crowd work for four people and just somehow eke out a few laughs and get off stage. Like, you know, it's eventually it kind of turns over on you, you know? Yeah, I guess that's true. I had one at Beauty Bar last week where uh, I I just bombed. There's like 10 people in the audience. I'm bombing and then I'm leaving and I thought I'm blind. I, I never had new glasses since 89. And I thought that uh, this kid that was sitting in the audience, I thought he was the booker of the show. So I went over to, like, shake hands and say thank you. And then I realized as I'm shaking hands, it's just a random audience member who hated me. Ah. (laughs) So I just bomb and then walk up to one of the people that I bombed for and was like, thank you. (laughs) And shook his hands. It was really embarrassing. Oh, boy. (laughs) Gary, what did you do this weekend? Uh, I was at Caroline's with Todd Berry. Woo! Ooh, that's nice. as good as it gets. <laughs> Caroline's count on Broadway. Uh, on Broadway. Let me ask you this. Joe, you're a veteran of the city for a long time. Is there a better gig on a weekend in New York City than Caroline's? I was hosting, too. So no, that's no, like, oh, no, that's, that's great money. Yeah. Was it 700 well, bucks at the end of the yeah, weekend? It's 125 a show. Right. So, uh, so yeah, I think, yeah. Six that's, shows, wow. that's, what is that, 750? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Oof. Unbelievable. Yeah, I think if you're doing a spot to a packed house, you know, Carolyn's is a great one. Uh, but I don't know. I headline at Gotham a lot, so I like Gotham, Gotham too. I, like, I love I Gotham. Like, Gotham's love great. Gotham. Stand Up New York, too. We're at Stand Up New York right now. <laughs> we probably should uh, talk about how great Stand Up New York is. Great room, but they don't do weekends. What do you mean? They don't do – it's a showcase club. Like, oh, yeah. right, right. They so we're talking headlining yeah. club. Right. Well, as far as – yeah. As yeah. F- uh, in fact, I'll be at Gotham this weekend. Oh, wow. <laughs> if this is out by this then. This is coming out. This will be out in 2014. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> well, I was there, and it was a good time. <laughs> right. Uh, they love you, those guys. The Mazzillis? Uh, the Mazzillis have been extremely uh, supportive through the years, uh, but so has – so is Louis Ferranda and Caroline Hirsch. I really like both places. And yeah. Stand Up New York, and where we are York. right now. <laughs> and the Stand. Right. The are. Stand has been very good. We yeah. are the Stand Up New York. I agree. Yeah. It's a great <laughs> club, but uh, hell of a club. So you're at Caroline's with Todd. Do you know Todd Barry? Did he ask for you specifically? And Yeah, well, uh, well, yeah, Todd asked for me specifically. He was like uh, Todd and Keith Alberstadt was there for uh, the first show on Wednesday. And then Marina Franklin, she featured later in the week. Mm-hmm. For the rest yeah, of the yeah, shows, yeah, yeah. Well, how about uh, that? but yeah, but all the shows were uh, were great. And then I, I ran into a problem on the uh, the Friday show. I uh, I left the story a bit late oh, and boy. Uh, got caught in crazy traffic. But uh, but right the whole the whole problem was I started wearing glasses. Yeah, and uh, who bought you those? On stage. <laughs> those are from the De- De Rosa collection. Yeah. <laughs> but I I get to the train. I actually went up to the end train at Ditmar's. And I'm waiting for the train. I see Faria's R- Rabini. Ah, uh, yes. And uh, we start talking, and he's like, "Where are you tonight?" And I was like, uh, he's "You stopped like, to chat. You're in a hurry." Well, no, because uh, we were waiting for the train. That's, oh, it's the last oh, stop. Okay, so the train, sorry. That's the last stop. So you wait for the train uh, to arrive, and then, uh, but then, so Faria's starts asking me, "He's like, where are you tonight?" I'm like, start talking to him, and then he, uh, I start looking for my glass. I'm like. Oh shit! I, I forgot my glasses, oh. and I think he thought that I didn't want to talk to him. It was an out. Yeah. Oh and yeah, because no one knows that you wear glasses. Yeah, right. exactly. It's very no, that's curb yeah. your enthusiasm. Really yeah. Yeah. So then I go and uh, I get to my apartment, and I get my glasses, and I I call a cab because I'm like, this is gonna be the fastest way. And uh, finally, a cab comes, and it's this woman driver. Oh uh, boy, oh, that's boy. a whole other podcast. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> was she Asian? Uh, Indian? She, she was uh, Greek. Oh, it's, it's, uh, Greek Here we yeah. go. And she yeah. wound up living right was around the corner. Was she taking it in the ass? <laughs> yeah. 
She, uh, is that a Greek that's thing? That's a big Greek thing. You didn't know that? What? I didn't know that. It's a big Arab thing. Greek women take it in the ass. Do you know that? Is that a thing? I had a Greek girlfriend, what? and she took it right in the ass. That's a big that's, thing. That's Google just it. one girl. There's a yeah. whole Wikipedia page. Greek girls take it in the ass. That's a website. What a dot org. Oh, wow. That's a big Arab thing because they think it means keeping virginity. Right. Is Greek yeah, not an yeah. Arab? No. no. Big difference. No, Joe. Greek yeah. is not Arab. Oh, well. <laughs> You're better than that. They both like PETA. I, 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 Greek yeah. girls are like uh, like anal sex. I had no idea. Like girls in Greece. I don't know about girls with Greece. Any Greek girls listening, please call in. <laughs> well, right. the phones are lighting up over here. <laughs> and, uh, all right, so go on. You had a Greek so, uh, yeah, who so may she or may not have taken it in the end. Yeah, so she drives me, and then we, we were taking forever. We finally get into the city, and the show already starts uh. at, at 8 o'clock. So it's 8 o'clock right now. I, I, uh, Worst feeling. I called me. Yeah, I, I called point. you to see maybe if he was in the area. Because I was like, I'm not going to get this. At least have somebody. Right, I would have loved to. It's funny because then I get mad. I don't yeah. feel bad for you. I'm just like, right, right. damn it, I wish I was there. Right. Yeah. And I was like, I was wondering if there's a way I could you beat asked Gary. Me, you, were, you, were, you asked me before if, uh, what time the shows were. Yeah, I was going to come by. by. Well, here's, can I, may I tell my story real quick? Uh, just yeah. to uh, digress. I was supposed to be, I was going to go to see you. Right. And then it was raining. So I was like, nah. Yeah. It was yeah. Brandon Newman. Oh, yeah, it was pouring out. Yeah, That's, yeah. That, that was another thing. So that made it just worse for travel. Right. So you're on the bridge. You call me. I can't help you. Uh, yeah, he can't help me. And then the bridge is clogged up. And uh, I call uh, Goots over at Caroline's. Yeah. And I let him know. And uh, But at first I got in touch with, like, I didn't have Goots' number. So I just called, like, the guy in, like, the coat check or whatever, uh -huh. the guy up top of the stairs. And he's like, yeah, well, uh, I'll let him know in, like, 45 minutes when I have my break. I was uh, like, oh, uh, well, you don't get it. Like, what an that, idiot. Well, he's uh, like, that's because nobody knows me. He's like, hey, I'm, uh, I'm actually hosting the show. Yeah. And it's like, you might want to let them know right. that it's not going to uh, gonna start on time. Right. Uh, or, you know, they're going to have to do something. And then finally he goes downstairs. Goots calls me back. And he's like, well, we're going to have Marina uh, go on. Just get here by 820. So you would feature. Yeah, so I'd feature. And then I'd finally get into uh, – into uh, the city, I'm on Second Avenue and Fifty Second, where Irish Exit is, and it's all clogged up because they're having like protests for like uh, Trayvon. I don't know, some, no, not yet. Oh, <laughs> this is pre-Trayvon. Yeah, pre the day before. Oh, maybe, maybe they're just uh, getting ready. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, it was for like this Muslim rally or whatever. And from anal. then on, yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> a lot of anal. They're That's why she yeah. was driving there. Yeah, yeah. there she's pro anal. Why didn't you? But why? Why didn't you just not get your glasses and just take? Yeah, you're not wearing them now. Yeah, I mean, well, because I mean, now I was wearing sunglasses, it. and you don't want to see the audience. But my point, I actually like seeing the audience. Ooh, well, my point yeah. is though, you just got glasses. It was your, yeah. what are you a week in? No, like two. Oh, well, no, I just like it. What do you mean two a week in wearing glasses? Yeah. Uh, no, I'm like three weeks in. So you I couldn't just, have gone. I, I just, I just like them. I just well, like look, I, you know, you like pizza, but you don't stop if you're running late. You know what I mean? Even right. if you're starving. Wow. You don't need pizza to see. Yeah. <laughs> but he could see. I, I'm saying he like, got oh, this far see. without the I glasses. See. Yeah, but I had like, like years of glasses. It was like glasses. two shows. <laughs> I just felt like I just needed them. Like if I was going to go on stage, I'd be like, oh, I wish I had my glasses. You'd feel uncomfortable. Yeah, exactly. So that's and that's what I, don't I wanted. I know if it's worth burning I, the bridge I, with I think Carolyn. you're right. Yeah. Well, I mean, it didn't burn. I mean, it didn't oh, burn. That's what they told you. Todd Berry, that stays in his head. Yeah. Was he pissed? No, he was totally fine with it. Yeah, that happens. Everyone, if you're in New York long enough, you know you get. Yeah, yeah. But everybody. And I really, I mean, I left. I still, after I got my uh, glasses, I left at seven twenty. The show is at eight. And you still were late. Oh, and I got and I tough. and I and I wound up getting there at eight twenty. So I had to run from fifty second and second all the way up to Whoa. Caroline. You could have taken the train at seven twenty and made it easily. I know, but I I got in my head. I was like, I just want to nah, not have know, the worries. I know that feeling. Yeah. I know that feeling. Have you ever have you ever missed the show completely? No. Yeah. I know. I have. I have. I have as well. It's a terrible feeling. I, I missed one. A good of, feeling. I missed one of the punchline in Atlanta just because I had the wrong time. Oh. Yeah. And it was the fourth night of the week, so I knew everyone. So I was walking in. I was like, Chuck, Big Steve, good oh, to see you. No. And I just hear laughter. I'm like, why is there a show going on? And they're like, yeah, you missed. The show's fucking over. I, I, had, yeah, a, I had a bad brutal. one too. Yeah. One time I uh, had a flight, Sacramento, big gig, theater gig, and. Uh, Got to the airport, and they're like, yeah, there's no Sacramento flights. I'm like, I have a ticket, you idiot. Look at my ticket. It says Sacramento. i got to get over there. And they're like, oh, yeah, you're, you're at LaGuardia. This is oh, flights Jesus. out of JFK. That, yeah. was, that was a few weeks ago, right? Yeah, yeah. That Brutal. happened to me before. Ended oh, really? Ended up at the wrong airport. I mean, and I was supposed to be in Newark, and I was at LaGuardia. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. That's and the wrong state. Yeah, my stomach dropped, and... 
the guy that worked at the Delta counter just took mercy on me. He's like, give me 50 bucks and I'll get you on the plane. What? Here. Yeah, wow. it was really. That's huge. I mean, he saw the. Pe- I just. No. no. <laughs> yeah, it's when I started out in the 80s. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, it was. Uh, but he just took mercy on me. I walked up to him and he goes, can I help you? And I go, I'm just going to be honest with you. I'm going to beg beg for something right now. Wow. I'm pleading with you and I'm begging for your mercy. And he started laughing like, what's up? And I told him what happened, and he was like, don't worry, I got you. Man, I've tried that so many times. It never works for me. I had a thing happen at, in Eesh. Minneapolis. I missed my flight uh, leaving Minneapolis, going back to New York. And uh, I talked to the woman. I was like, I missed my flight. And she's like, you missed it by more than an hour, so you're going to have to pay $500 right. for a new ticket. And I just made $700, probably netted $300. Yeah. right. And so I was like, $700, and I gave her my credit card to pay. I was just like, fuck it, I'll just pay. Yeah. She swipes it. It doesn't go through. And so I'm like, what the fuck? So I go to call my mother to be like, my credit card's not working. I'm fucked just to kvetch to my mother. I go back up to the counter. It's a different woman. And she's like, yeah, you don't have to pay anything. I'll just put you on the next flight. Get the hell out of here. Yeah. So if my yeah. card had gone through, I would have just given the airline like $700. Right. I was like, I wanted to find that woman wow. and yeah. fucking beat That's her to death. That's just people. Yeah, they're just, yeah, yeah, they're just people. horrible people. Fucking yeah. freaks, huh? It's, well, I, <laughs> I always say to, the, to anybody in that position, customer service position, I always say, you know that you can help. Yes, them. right, right. It's is, just you don't feel like it right and, now. And yeah, that's typing. They do all that typing. They don't, they're just Bullshit. looking at nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they don't get a raise. For, they don't work on commission. No, they're right. fucking horrible people. What's yep. the difference? But in their defense, I used to do that when I worked in customer service. I was miserable. I hated the people that came in. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody was an asshole. Right. So then, if somebody was in, at all being a dick, you're like, "Fuck you! I'm not helping you." And you would just you just say, "I can't." But then, I meanwhile, I could not only could I do what the guy needed me to do, I could do. Three steps above and beyond that, right, right, right. You know, and you're you're cutting them off right at the at the initial pass. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Here's a here's how much of a psychopath I am. Living in New York, I wanted to go to New Orleans for Mardi Gras, and uh, there was a snowstorm, so they were only letting a few people on the plane. And so I cocked up, uh, concocted a plan where I would go to the airport with a a ring box, and I was like, "Look, buddy, you gotta let me on that plane. I'm proposing in New Orleans," <laughs> yeah. and I showed him the ring. Still didn't let me on. Really? Wow. Yeah. Wow, what Nothing. a jerk. What a wow. dick. Man. I know. Jesus. I made a big production. I was like, look, bring it in, bring it in. He leaned in. I was like, here it is. I opened it. <laughs> Where'd you get the that's ring hilarious. from? It's like a, my girlfriend's ring. Just <laughs> oh, that's one. hilarious. Yeah. By the way, I like I like the term cocked up. I think we should use that. Cocked up, yeah. Cocked it. I cocked up a plan. This is yeah, Tuesdays like with that. cocked up. Like so how, how are the shows, Gary? Did you have any, uh, any oh, wild show- ones, hecklers, drunks, maniacs, uh, girls? No, everybody was, uh, It was on, they were, all the shows were great. And I feel like. I mean, he gets like uh, it wasn't. They weren't all. Uh, n- none of them were sold out, but they were all had like 150, 200 people, and like both section and Carolines were were filled up, like the front row and the the back back section. Real comedy fans. Oh yeah, absolutely. And they're there to you know like just listen and laugh. Yeah. And it's uh, I find it crazy. You know, it's like uh, and I mean, basically working with him like taught me. It's like you know who would be a, like a good opener for me. Uh-huh. You know, eventually. Yes. It's yes. like you want guys who are telling. Soupy jokes. sales. Right, right. You right. Know, That's not, a big thing with uh, hosts in New York. People don't tell jokes. There's all this thing where MCs just go up and do all crowd work. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Everyone. you got to have some jokes in there. Well, because right. I think, I mean, and, and I go up there and I'm, uh, you know, I don't, I, I don't do a lot of crowd work. So it's like, you know, I might say hi to the audience. Yeah. And then I'm getting into material. But it's the true bullet spot. It should be, is the host spot. Yeah. It's not, it shouldn't be the first spot on the right, show. Right. It's like the host should, you know, warm them up to a point where, you know, obviously you want the first few jokes to hit, but they're still getting warmed up. Yes. And by the fourth, you know, third, fourth joke, have them ready to go. And then the next comic, when he's brought up, then he's just ready to go. That's not the right, bu- that shouldn't right. be the bullet, really. Now, after the shows, did you hang out? Did you meet the fans, the people? Do you tell Yeah, I hung out. Like, hung, like Ty was selling CDs, so just like hang out with him. Right, right. Uh, selling CDs and just, you know, say hi to people. But, I mean, uh, just have like. Added like three new followers. Hey, <laughs> that's not bad. Hey, that's that's baby. one a day for a weekend. Yeah, yeah. that uh, by the time you're fifty, you'll have you know. I uh, <laughs> you ever pissed off Todd Berry? Because I I have a story about how I pissed him off. I don't know. Should I even tell it? Why is not? That, yeah, you why should not? tell it. Well, I mean, is he, he gonna be well, pissed? he wasn't just so you know. Like, I mean, he's I mean, he's a nice guy. Like, he wasn't pissed about like the travel thing. He like made a joke about it in the show. He's like, "What do you think was gonna happen when you leave a story at seven forty five? Like, right, he was right. on stage. I mean, I didn't really leave it at seven forty five, but like he was fine with it. You know, it's like stuff happens. Yeah, yeah obviously. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, but I mean, I'm okay. sure he wasn't that mad at you. Well, it was. First of all, I think I've always annoyed him over the years just with my dumb questions. 
Like uh, one time I saw him at Eastville, and I was like, hey, you ever open with New? And he was like, don't talk to me. I was like, all right. Uh, but uh, then we kind of made friends over the years, and uh, I, I, uh, did, I opened for Natasha Leggero at Caroline's, and he did like a guest spot because he was working on a Letterman. And uh, he would do this one joke every set because he did like four sets throughout the weekend, and it would bomb every time. And it was like not up to par with the rest of his material, and I was like, eh. so I thought we had, you know, made a good, we had cocked it a good friendship. So I uh, said, hey buddy, gotta ask you, you're killing up there. Why are you, why are you doing that one bit? It's bombing every time. And he goes, what the fuck did you say to me? And I was like, you know, just saying the bit's not hitting. Like, why, <laughs> why do you keep doing it? And he's like. Are you fucking serious? And I was like, Of course not! Because <laughs> I caught on it immediately that he was about to kill me. And I was like, Of course, I'm joking with you. You're a king. You're a, you're a legend, buddy. And I like fake hugged him and ran away. Absolutely <laughs> right to say that to you. Yeah. I know, but I just uh, it was bothering me. Just the why? Why the bit is bombing? Can I, can I make a commentary uh, on your class of comedians? Yeah, like, okay. and I, no, 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 don't, please, you know, no, please. But, I'm interested in this. But I've noticed there's a lot of that from the guys like that you came up with, Is like that your right? whole group. There's a very like loose lipped, matter of fact attitude yeah. that that whole crew would do. I would say you name guys some are other people. Yeah, like which who else? Is? Name some other people. No, I'm not going to name names. I don't want to do that. But like, but like, it's uh, <laughs> loose lipped. Yeah, <laughs> and I like you a lot. I'm oh, not hey, hey. Just trashing you. Um, but I know, and I'd say you guys are probably like the class. Below yours, yeah. Like yeah. you guys are like the juniors, you know, to, to whatever to right. our scene. To my, I'm not that I'm a senior. You know, you're, you're the college guys. You're, still you're come behind parties. us, whatever. Yeah, and uh, just in time wise. But like the point is, is that uh, there's this thing. It's like I think it's got to do with the internet or something. I feel like I feel like there it, the internet was such an, an integral part of your guys' experience, uh-huh. and also like the free show experience of like. Everybody had their own show. Everybody right, was producing a show. Right. Everybody was trading spots. And I feel like there was never any of that, like, hard, like, take your lashes kind of time. Mm-hmm. And, like, when List and I came to New York, it was like you went and sat at the cellar and you just got the shit kicked out right, of you. Right, right. It was fucking brutal over there, man. Yeah. Like, just shut your fucking face. You know uh-huh. what I mean? And, and it just kind of beat, like, decency <laughs> into you. Yeah. And I feel like you guys didn't really go through that. And... And uh, and it's just a whole different vibe now. Like, Interesting. Like, I would, like, have been panicked to say that to Todd Barry. Really? Even now, I'd be like, I'd be like, I'd be like there wouldn't even, it, yeah. I'd be, like, shaking if I thought, if you had the thought of, like, having to say that to a guy that was that established and that far ahead of me and, right. and all that stuff. You know what I mean? I and mean, Mark yeah. is quite bold. Yeah. I this am bold, bold, and I'm a risk yeah. taker verbally. Right. Yeah. Physically, I'll, I'll never take a risk. But, like, uh... I I hear you and I think you're right, but it, I have the utmost respect. Like it's not like sure you do. I'm not like uh, uh, Todd and me are on the same level. Like I get it. No, yeah. I know, I know. I'm a huge fan. I listened to him, you know, before I started doing comedy. Uh, but <clears throat> that's why I said I wasn't trashing you. Yeah, it's yeah. just a different. Like I, I don't think it's right, but I think it's a different. There's a very different mentality with it because you guys, like your concept of the seller, is oh yeah. So I put it, like, it on a pedestal. But I mean, it's so different than what it was. The seller. When List and I came around, it was, it was DePaulo, Quinn, Norton, Patrice, Voss, Bobby, Kelly, Bill Burr, yeah, uh, sometimes Geraldo, Chappelle, Geraldo, Geraldo, Geraldo yeah. Keith Robinson, yeah. It was like, it, it was like a fucking war zone in there, man. Yeah. The second you said anything like slightly off, out of line, dumb, anything they could jump on, it was like dogs to, like, a fucking piece of raw meat. You know oh, yeah. I mean, I, I watch Tough Crowd. I love all those guys. But isn't there a point where it's like, can't we just hang out? Why, I hate living in fear, you know? like No, no. We could – look, I've become friends with, almost, I think, all those guys basically over the years. And yeah. Like, and, like, I certainly – excuse me, feel, feel comfort, like, around those guys even uh, that, more so than I did when I first moved here. Yeah. And I still look up to them and admire them. But the, I think the only difference – absolutely, there can be a comfort is what I'm trying to say. But I think the difference is is that um, I've just noticed it with young dudes. They just kind of talk. They just kind of act like, yeah, man, fuck it, right? Right, it's right. It's like, no, dude, like have a little fucking respect for what's going on here. Right. You know what I mean? Like, Yeah. I'm just trying to inspire a provocative right. conversation. No, I, Nobody's I, really jumping in on this. I hear you. I'm not uh, listening. I'm listening. You're not listening. I think it's interesting. The yeah. first four letters of listener list. <laughs> also, DePaulo 
had, had a problem with me. So yeah, you're on to something here. I mean, Gary Goldman has told me multiple times, like, hey, you need to, you got to put a filter on. But well, I mean, I think just, it's more you. It's, it's more me. It's more yeah, you, but that's also what makes it's you the internet. I think what makes that, me like you. You know, you know, your parents went awry somewhere. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's the internet because I was, I'm like the last group before the internet thing. The internet's, yeah, that's that wasn't as good an example as I meant to. to We're six to months use apart. As like, there was a lot of spot trading though in your crew. Like, like, oh yeah, that we didn't have that. Like, I mean, I guess. The downtown scene was still there, obviously, right. long before I ever came to New York. But it was a very different scene. Yeah. It was as sort of be uh, uh, beloved as the club scene was, just by different a different group of comics. Right, it was two different so, worlds. Yeah, you still had to like work your way in and hang out. There was still all the same shit you had to go through, uh-huh. except you never had to do bringers or anything like that. But um, but then somewhere along the last ten years, it shifted and became more like. I mean, I remember the frustration of when, like, Jared Logan and I were doing our own show, like, trying to promote it and being like, Brutal. you can't promote the goddamn show. Yeah, and it's Every- a great show. Yeah, it was. It, yeah. it was like everybody never, never had a Facebook invite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. five times a day. These, And it was like, Jesus Christ, man. Yeah. Like, there's no way to get any attention right. to this thing. Right. I, I, don't, I wouldn't read the Facebook invite. No. No, you don't. Yeah, it. it's garbage. You know? Yeah. So it's just a different time. Of course, yes. You know? Yeah, I don't know. I... I just I have this thing I have to say something you know like like with Kramer you know like I, he's gonna make fun of her hair when no one else we all know not to say anything but I have that thing where oh, I geez, just, I thought you right. meant the other Kramer thing well, where no, were you on the knee? <laughs> Take it easy. I have that little of that too <laughs> where were you on the knee thing <laughs> oh the knee thing what about it oh but yeah you, you got you know shorts over here. Oh, oh, yeah. That's I don't know. not part of the podcast anymore. I know. I forgot yeah. that we recorded that. That's why I sort of fizzled <laughs> out there. Oh, yeah. okay. we, we started this podcast. We did uh, like a five-minute thing where Joe and I were really going at it, and then uh, it wasn't recording, so we started fresh with a much kinder, gentler. Yeah, yeah and you were going at it about my knees. Yeah, your, your knee was up on the table. It was very gross. Anyway, speaking of your needs. Knees. Uh, oh, knees. What, uh, where, where were you, Joe, yeah. this weekend? You, you, had a, you had a pretty big weekend, right? I was at Helium in Philadelphia. Hometown. Going back to headline the hometown? Yeah, which is always nice. Yeah. Where I'm from. And did, you, did, you, did you bring an yeah. opener? Gary was talking about who he'd want to open. Do you bring an opener? I, you know what's funny? I didn't bring an opener, but my friend Harris Stanton ended up being the... the I love Harris. Funny oh, yeah. guy. Funny guy. Just by chance. Nice so I was happy about that. And uh, and it was you know it was fun. It was fun. My first road gig with Harris Stanton. Oh, how about yeah. that? Yeah, he's oh, a really? good dude. Harris is a yeah. good guy. Um, we had a good time. Local host? Local host, funny kid. What was his name? I know a bunch of those guys. I f- I'm blanking on his name right now. I feel like an asshole. Nice kid. I only met him once, though. Like, what, bef- what the hell are you doing? What do you mean? See, that's your generation. What are you, what you, are you guys? Yeah, don't, you guys. No, are, what are you doing? <laughs> oh, yeah. You only yeah, met. Yeah. You, you don't memorize names. You I, met uh, the MC once. No, no I only Who are you, met Diana him. Like, Ross? This was like the first time I met him. Basically, was this weekend, and uh, we didn't really hang out much or anything. He's very funny, and I'm forgetting oh, wow. his name right now. Not because but I didn't get I, his name. I'm just blanking but on his name. Aren't you way. sharing the green room with him? He didn't really hang out in the green room much, to be honest with you. He kind of come oh, in right before you to bring me up. Interesting. That's a strange thing. Yeah. That's weird when these young guys. That's going back to a generation thing, maybe. There's guys that just don't hang out in the green room. I'd be so thrilled to just oh be in God, there. Oh, my God. That's all time. I want to do. But some he, people think that that's their overstepping. Oh, that's the headliner's green room. I'm not going to hang out in there. I'll but stay there not. until it's they the, say something. Because I want to. Com- really? It's the talk. comedian's yeah. green room. I don't like that. He- if it's a theater, I'm just you have your own. No, I know. I know. I'm not arguing with you, but I'm arguing against those people. Right. The green room is for the comedians. If you're an MC, you're a comic, and you're on the show. Yeah. It's just as much yeah. your green room. If the headliner uh, yeah. goes, can I get a few minutes, I don't think that's crazy. Right, right. But it's just as much your fucking green room. Yeah. I, I certainly didn't, like, keep him out, and he certainly wasn't not hanging out in there to be antisocial. He just wasn't really hanging out. I think, too, though, because I was telling him how my nerves were really going before every show, because, like, my family was coming out, and we had some radio issues in Philly. Uh-oh. Um, oh, boy. So I was worried about the numbers and all this stuff, and everything ended up being great and fine. But um, but I think he knew my nerves were going, and maybe he was just trying to be like, ah, I'll let you alone. He never said that, but maybe that's what he was doing. I don't know. Yeah. Um, so we never really we never we didn't hang out at the shows. I didn't I didn't go out at all this week really. So there was none of that hang out and have a beer time. No right? drinking after. No, none this weekend. That seems like the fun part. Uh, headlining, you do it two hours a night. Go it's get a lot a beer. of fun. It's been a lot of fun for. 12 years. Oh, so. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know. I was just trying to take a little breather. So, uh-huh. um, but you know, as far as stories of the weekend go, this would be the main story. Here we <laughs> go. Yeah. yeah. Cue the music. 
Here we go. We're finally getting right. to the, to the point good. of the podcast. <laughs> well, the point of the how, podcast how is a very are we? engaging conversation. <laughs> 30 minutes in. Here we go. We got a story. That internet thing was good. That was a good little thing. I thought that was really good. Yeah. I think you should expand your podcast outside the boundaries Well, that's what it is. stories. It starts off with what did you do this weekend, and then it goes into a thing. This might be a better conversation to have after the show right. is over. No, you got to let it all out on the podcast. That's what you do on a podcast. All right. This is well. This is the, the, that's the beauty of it. It's not radio. Radio is where not all radio, but a lot of radio is where they go. Keep it tight and do the bits, and we got to play this right. clip or whatever. It's like no, man. This is this is the beauty of this. You but let it hang I, out. But I think you're doing. The, I mean, I agree. Welcome I agree. to the Joe DeRosa show. But you're uh, <laughs> but you're, you're you're telling us we should do what we've already done. You're no, like, you but, should expand it and have it go into conversation. Like, yeah, yeah, we already did that. Now we're getting back to the track. Yeah, but I was just expressing a thought. Oh, but then I, I you said we it. should say it after, and I'm like, no, say uh, say everything on. This is very meta because we're doing the thing yeah. inside of the thing in the yes. beauty of a podcast. Yes. Yeah, and I don't po- get it. Metacast. <laughs> so meta, I don't get it. Call it Metacast. <laughs> Meta- anyway, I want uh, yeah. I want to call we're, it cock up. This is cocked up. Look, I'm not gonna I don't I'm not gonna be inflammatory or whatever because everything ended up being fine. But uh, there was a. I went down to Philly. Uh, you know I'm from there. Fat chicks, cocaine. No, come on. No. Uh, actually, not what you're expecting, but I think that's why it's maybe a good story. Oh, a black chick. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Greek girl? No Greek, but anal. Uh, <laughs> oh, hey, all right. So we we went. To, I went down to Philly, and um, for whatever reason, the big radio show affiliated with the club that you know usually has the comics come on passed on having me on Ooh. And, oh boy. now i've been on before mm-hmm. i've been on the show before oh, that's even worse and we've seemingly always had a really good time together and whatever and but this is like the third time that they've not had me in did you so, give them notes like you gave us what's that when you did it when you giving them notes yeah yeah i was did, telling you them shit on their generation the and, <laughs> yeah yeah the whole thing i didn't shit on your generation no i know yeah you know, I thought you maybe you would have backed me up a little bit. You know? <laughs> <laughs> a little age group camaraderie, well, but you know, whatever. Well, we're the same age group. Well, whatever. Uh, you know what I mean. Uh, so, Not really. So, uh, <laughs> anyway, the point is, is that uh, I was like something. I don't understand why this is happening. Yeah. Um, well, was it a bad time you had? Like, was no. Something... Every time I've been in, it's been good. All right. We've all been laughing and getting along. I don't. I don't. I don't know what happened. Maybe it was the shorts. So maybe it was the shorts. Maybe they just don't like me. I don't know. Ah. I just don't know what it was. So my point is, is I was a little upset like that they didn't have me in. Of course. Because that can potentially fuck with your ticket sales. So uh, I ended up driving to New York on Friday. O&A called me, and they said, you want to come and do the show tomorrow? And I said, yeah, Jesus. you Perfect timing. Yeah. I need to do this, That's actually. Great. So uh, I drove up. It ended up being like a five-hour round trip on Friday. Yeah. Jeez. Um, which I look, I would have done it either way, but like you know, it was a it was a big time commitment. Um, when you know, theoretically, I could have driven fifteen minutes, yeah, and just really pushed in Philly or whatever. So I, uh, I uh, what's it called? I, um, I came back and I was like, okay, this is Friday afternoon. And I'm like, we're over it. Everything worked out. My friends came through in the clutch. This is great. Per- like beautiful, whatever. And I let it go. Went to the show that night. Now I'm working on this new hour of material uh, because I have the CD coming out, and I don't want to do any of the stuff from the CD anymore. Right. So I have this new hour that I'm building, and it's going well. It's going very well, but there's a, there's about a seven minute dip in the second half of it that I'm trying to figure out. So early show Friday, it went like gangbusters. Everything worked. Everything popped. All right. One of the best clubs in the country. Yeah, uh, I love Helium yeah. Comedy club. club. Great club, great staff, everything. Yeah. So and then I. St- we do the second show, and the show's fine, but they're getting that tired, it's late thing. Friday late show's rough. Yeah, the room was a little hot. People were kind of sweating and stuff, and it all just kind of climaxed at that like point of like, oh, this is also where my act has been like dipping a little uh... bit, and I'm trying to figure this out. But I was like, you know what? It worked on the early show. Fuck it. Fuck it. I'm gonna, this is going to work again, and it didn't work as well, but then I got him back, and it was fine. Yeah. Right. There's this dude sitting in the front row. Always that dude. Right? Mm-hmm. Usually it's that woman, but we'll go with that dude this time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's, he's this guy, and I don't know who he is. Uh, he's just a guy. He seemed like he was having a good time, and he leaves, and I'm like, okay, great, whatever. 
The next day, Saturday morning, I wake up and I get a tweet from somebody and they say, so and so from now, this has all been on the air, which is why I'll talk about this. Uh, So and so from the fanatic sports radio show station, uh, which is an FM sports radio station in Philadelphia. Is that the one that didn't have you on? No, oh, it's a okay. different okay. one. Okay. This is a whole new bag of radio now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so and so from the Fanatic Morning Show uh, in Philly is is on the air saying that you bombed last night. Oh man! And that he didn't like the show, and I was like, and I, I got the tweet like two hours later, so yeah. I didn't, it was done. Yeah. So I'm like, what the fuck? Ouch! So I'm like, okay, don't need jerk react to this. Just figure out what's going on. So I tweet the kid back, and I'm like, look, I didn't hear it. I'd love to know what he said. And the kid's like, he said you bombed and this and that and that. Then the guy jumps in. Wow. And the guy's like, I didn't say he bombed. I said that he was uh, – that the uh, beginning of the show was good and the end of the show was bad. And uh, and that, you know, I didn't want to hear new material or so- something along those lines. Mm-hmm. Then he tweeted to me, the radio guy, and he's like, look, man, I know you were working on new material. I, Helium Comedy Club is the best place to do it. That's a great spot. And I like this joke, whatever. And then I was like, I'm getting confused now because yeah. if you knew what was going on, because I would say yeah. it at the top of every show, I'd get on stage and I'd go, guys, I'm working on this new hour. And I'd make a joke. Let's be honest. The people in Austin in August are going to get a better show. Uh, right. <laughs> you know, but I was, I was joking. I didn't mean right, that. Right, it was right. just a joke. So I was a little confused. Then he was like, look, man, I, I swear I w- my words are being twisted around here. I wasn't that harsh. And I was like, okay, fine. And I, I just wrote, thanks, no worries, whatever. Then that night, so now I'm over radio again. Like yeah. This is like two like, turbulent things for yeah, me emotionally right. where I'm like, what the fuck? It's my hometown. Yeah. What the fuck is going on here? So then that night, a friend of mine comes to the show, and he's like, yeah, I heard that thing on the radio today. And I'm like, was it okay? It was okay, right? And he's like... No, it was unpleasant, man. Like, he's making it sound like it wasn't. He was like, oh, what and I'm like, shit God it. damn it, man. So now I'm like, now what do I do? Right. Do I, what do I do? I don't know what to do. And I'm just like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm just going to leave it alone. Mm-hmm. I was following him on Twitter. I unfollowed him. And I'm just like, I'm just going to leave it at that. I'm not going to block him or do anything drastic. I'm just going to leave it alone. So I was pissed. But what are you going to do? Saturday night, we had two amazing shows. They were packed. It was like, hey, man, it's, it all came together in yeah. the end. So it doesn't really matter. Um, then today, Uh-oh. my same friend that said, dude, he was being unpleasant, texted me, and he goes, they were on the radio today. His co-host reprimanded him hey! and said, you can't go after local talent like that. That's not cool. Oh, that's wow. great. Yeah. And the guy apologized on air and was like, look, I, I, I was being too harsh. I'm sorry. All right. So, it, again, it all works it out. It all worked out. But, I mean, Jesus Christ, man. Like, yeah. I mean, you want to talk about, like, how could I define the feeling of loneliness? It was like, <laughs> right. you go back to your hometown to headline, yeah. and you're at this great club, and the whole club's excited about it, and they're pushing for you, and and then all of a sudden, like, your local radio isn't getting behind you, and then you're Oof. like, what the fuck is going on here? Yeah. But I will say, and this is not ego talking at all, it felt really great to, like, leave that weekend with – Five shows that sold really well, yeah. Without the help of any of it, you know what I mean. We yeah. did it. We did one sh- station, twelve ten, uh, and they were amazing. And this guy Chris was really great, and I so thank you to him uh, because he was the one guy that had us on. And um, you know, it just felt great to be like, yeah, we pulled this off. Like Opie and Anthony brought me in. This all happened, yeah. You know, but it was like, and I good- mean, you want to talk about stress, dude? I mean, I was fucking. Yeah, I can bad. imagine. That, you know. that hearing someone shitting on you on the radio, uh, I like if someone shitting on me in the in the room hurts. Right, right. Broadcasted in your hometown. In Plus, your hometown. it's like you're doing new material, so he gets that you're working on stuff, and so he kind of understand. I mean, he understands comedy, but still wants to like just open up his mouth. I guess he said something along the lines of like he didn't appreciate being told that he was getting new material, mm. but then he also said. Well, it, you work on it at Helium. You don't work on it at the Borgata. And it's like, well, t- <laughs> yeah, like, the Borgata. But the way he made it sound was that, which for those of you in Los Angeles, the Borgata is a casino in Atlantic City. Atlantic City. But, like, here's the thing is, like, he made it. This is what bothered me more than anything. He made it sound like, so I hear. Yeah. That I was somehow up on stage going, hey, take it or leave it, folks. Uh-huh. Jerking myself off. And when 
when minute after minute of bad material wasn't working, I refused to get off court. And it's like, no, the first like fucking 35 to 40 minutes of this new set were working like clockwork. Yeah, it was great. It was working perfectly. The last seven to ten, which is basically the closer, was working great, too. There was just this seven to ten minute window in between those where it just kind of dipped for a while uh-huh. and got a little one note. And for two shows, I tried to figure that out. And then I was like, fuck it. It's not working. I'm just going to take that out and do some older stuff and I'll figure it out. Yeah. You know, and it's like, dude, just because I don't know. It's like if you don't like the joke, it doesn't mean it's bad. Yeah. Right. I right. Little, right. And like, I'm not going That's after this point. guy. It's all good. Like, we're everything's fine. Like, he apologized and I appreciate that. But I've always had a really big problem with the opinion or the attitude that somebody has when dealing with any sort of like, you know, artistic thing or whatever it is. And or it could be even be architecture, it could be anything. Just because you don't like it doesn't mean it sucks. Yeah. You know, and like, I really get angry at people that, that like go, that'll, they'll say things like, you know, uh, uh, Rod, you know, Rodney Dangerfield sucks. Right. It's like, yeah. No, no, uh. it doesn't suck. It's not for you. Yes. It's actually of a very high quality. Yeah. You just don't like it. Right. Classical music sucks. Yeah. No, you just don't like classical music. Exactly. If you're going to dissect it from a technical standpoint, it does anything but suck. It's yeah. immensely fucking complicated. Of course. Right. I mean, hate the people who go right to it. So I have a friend. He's like, sushi sucks. Sushi's amazing. There's sushi restaurants everywhere. You just don't like it. Right. I mean, we bounce jokes off each other all the time, and it's like, how many times is somebody like, oh, that joke sucks? And yes. Then, and you go up on stage and you do it and it kills. 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 You know, it's just, and, and that's a comic that you're, that's come, that it's coming yeah, from. So right. It, so it gets in your head, but I mean, there's a way to make everything work, you know? And that seven minutes, you know, that will eventually will work. Yeah, because, I'll figure it out. Yeah. I'll figure it out. But, you know, that's the thing, too. It's like, it's like if you're going to tell me something sucks, I'm not saying things can't suck. Yeah. A lot of shit sucks. Right. I like constructive criticism. You know, it's but, like, don't just say something sucks. Give like, you know... Oh, how do you make this better? That's right. why I like talking to a comic. But I, when a comic says, "Oh, that sucks," there's no way to make that work. It's like, no, there's a way to make it work. Right? Yeah. Like, let's. Yeah, you know, like it's like work it's it. like if I'm gonna sit, if I say, if I say any any real most most real okay, flavor of love sucks. Okay. I know it's an old reference, but like, flavor of love sucks. Why? Well, because I think it's bad for women. I think it's bad for the culture. It upsets me to see this guy that was in this revolutionary, groundbreaking rap group like sell himself to women on television. Uh, I not think funny. it's not funny. It's not entertaining unless you're just looking to exploit people that you look down on, right? Because of their like gross behavior and stuff like that. Like I can tell you why I think that show is bad. Yeah, you know what I mean. On the other hand, I don't like Glee. I don't think it sucks though. Right. You know what I mean. Yeah, it's like point. I get yeah. why Glee people like it. Right. I just don't like it. And I just want to say to all the women who've shot me down, I don't suck. You just don't <laughs> like it. <them. laughs> You cool? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, 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 <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I, I feel like that would have been a great moment to be like, that's it. That's the show. Oh, he shit. doesn't suck. Sorry. But now we, we got we to come back around again. Ah, oh, boy. It was too, this is very exciting. My bad. No, no, it's my bad. I could have been like, oh. he doesn't suck and we don't suck and fuck dick suck. Right. Cunt the show. <laughs> uh, is cunt a verb? It can be. All right. Cunt the show. Cocked up. Adjective, too. Did you know that? Cunty. Cunty or cunting? Cunting. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> it's in The Exorcist. She, sa- she says you're cunting daughter. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Mm. And I've heard that other times, too. Mm. I'd rather be <laughs> cunting. Cunting does <laughs> sound better than cunty, right? Yeah, cunty it does. sounds bratty and whiny right. and shitty. I think it's safe to say we're going to have no women fans if this is the... Uh... We'll have one on next show. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's we'll a, have a bunch of It'll be fun. Yeah. Why don't you have, uh, have Amy come on? Oh, she would... She's a little busy. <laughs> <laughs> busy lady. I try not to bother her with my own shit. Right, right, right. <laughs> hey, she'll hot. be working on this bit. How are you? Can I, can I call you? Come do hot soup. Yeah, I've asked. Yeah, I bet. You guys are pals, though. You've been yeah, on the road for a long time together Of course, at this point. but, you know, 
people don't want to be asked to do stuff. If she wanted to do something, she would say, "I'll, I'll, I'll I'd love to do that." But I, you know, uh, Bur- Burr is my Schumer. I ask him to do all kinds of shit. I really, do the same yeah. with DePaulo. He does it too. He looks really? too. Yeah, he does it. Yeah, yeah. Wow. I'm gonna great. get Nick to come on and do this show. Oh, jeez, I can't handle that. Yeah, well, that'll be a humdinger. I gotta sit in a shark cage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you should get Nick to do the show. Yeah, I'd oh, love I'd love to, to do it. Love yeah, to have him. I'll I'll have him. piano. Yeah, yeah, good fun. He's gonna have a barbecue soon. Yeah, I mean, I don't know why he canceled the last one because he thought it was going to rain and it didn't rain. It didn't rain, and then he's going to have one on the twenty eighth, but everyone's going to be in Montreal. So, uh, but uh, not. When Nick DePaul is going to have a barbecue. We'll let you know the listeners when to come to his house. He's very welcoming and engaging guy. Yeah. Uh, so well, there you go. So Actually, was, I am going to be in Montreal. Oh, hey. Oh, I mean, I'm not going to be there on the twenty eighth. Oh, 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 I'll see you there. Now it sounds like I'm post bragging. I didn't mean to. Where do are you going to be? Right. Comedy Works. No, at the festival. Oh. Comedy works. Well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be at the comedy yeah, like, in the yeah. mall. Yeah, like, uh, <laughs> I, work, I work comedy works. It's one of the best clubs. I'm joking. I'm just saying, usually when you say I'm going to Montreal, well, you're going for the festival. I, I, you I work comedy going works, to... too. I'm well, just kidding. It might be hard to believe that you're going to the festival again. <laughs> you're there every fucking year. I know. I mean, it's... Singer loves you, huh? What are you going to do? These guys can't get enough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, don't, I don't see it. I don't think you suck, but uh, I don't see it. He doesn't uh, get it. See, this guy, List is always going to come at me. And then we had this thing. List and I had this fake we're going to bond thing for like a six months. Is that we, right? Where we, <laughs> I don't think so. Absolutely. He perpetuated it, actually. Wow. Um, we, we had a phase that we went through. We were really friendly for uh-huh. a long time. Somewhere it turned. I don't know what happened. I, I assuming I pissed you off in some way or did something no, you, you thought I was arrogant or something. Uh yeah, and you wouldn't be the first one. <laughs> I'm not like passing the buck here, but the pr- point is, is somewhere some switch went off. Yeah, where List and I just were at each other's throats all the time. We'd go to these parties, <laughs> we'd be drinking. All of a sudden, we're yelling at each other. Whatever. Usually, it was. usually that's perpetuated, cocked up by you. You think I start it? Yes, I do. Really? Yeah, I, yeah. I disagree with that. If you see something you don't like, you will say it. I like and I think there's it. a lot of things he does that you don't like. Right. And then you say <laughs> it, and then you defend yourself, and then... Yeah, I okay. mean, you were breaking my balls from the second you walked in the door today. There you go. Yeah. I was joking around. Well, <laughs> I was busting his balls, too. Right. That's fine. And, and you laughed. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's scary. Yeah, exactly. let, me ma- let me make a point, though. Oh, please. Uh, I don't oh, have boy. a problem with you breaking balls. Right. I, all my friends break balls. I thought and it was I our balls. generation. You did a whole spiel about how we don't watch the internet. And, but uh, correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> correct me if I'm wrong. No, this was off the air. Joe was breaking balls. That's fine. As soon as I broke his balls, he started fucking yelling at me. Oh. When did I, what are you talking about? When I said the thing, when I thought you were saying sit there and wait for us to start or whatever, and I went, oh, fuck you. Oh, Let us that... just jump in. And then you went, oh, fuck you. Why don't you appreciate two guys said well, you're that... on the fucking podcast? <laughs> that wasn't breaking <laughs> right there. And then I go, why don't you appreciate that I drove an hour and ten minutes beer? And you said, I don't appreciate it. Oh, oh wow. I, I, I think I have a fair that point was, here. That too. wasn't breaking balls. That was an argument. That's different that than breaking balls. That was not an argument, Joe. I was breaking your balls and we we have a consistent history no 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 we Break, have a consistent history, have a history. It escalates. where when i Most when definitely. i fuck with you back you start going you're you're getting all mad you do that all the time to me and i'm like i'm oh, not getting mad this has come up a lot here, here, people keep I, saying to you here you can't thing. take it but you can dish it i agree with that i hear yeah. that yeah. you want to do the fucking jackie mason hey folks right hey whatever look at Jack, this guy you jackie do that mason. constantly <laughs> You do that constantly, but when, when I fuck with you back, you get really defensive. But here's the thing, and, and I have good uh, debates on both. Of the, the previous one we talked about, that was like, that wasn't even completely in the wrong. And then even Giannis admitted, he was like, oh, yeah, yeah. He's like, you're completely right. I was just fucking around. Uh-huh. This one, that I, that didn't feel like busting ball. You weren't like, yeah, look at you. You, you remember you called me a dizzy Mick, Mick or something? Yeah. Well, we, we, we died laughing. That was great, fun. You have dizzy great sex. This funny. one, it was classic. This this wasn't breaking balls. We had an argument over how to do the show. That to no, me is not breaking balls. It wasn't an argument though. We haven't recorded. Well, we don't have it recorded, but we have it was... fake recorded. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we, we you said t- why don't you do your show like the way Mark Marin does his show? I w- that's no, no, not breaking that's balls. Not, hold that's... on a second. Hold on a second. I didn't say that right off the bat. What I said to that was. Help. I thought you were saying you and Gary have to wait for us to call on you before you can speak. Right, right. That and was just a misunderstanding. Yeah, yeah. And then, as, as like fucking with you, I went, I went, oh fuck you, Joe. Really, we got to sit here like it's fucking like we're on Stern. That's what I said for nah, you. Yeah, he did it. say that. I did right, say right. that. And then you went. 
fuck you. It's how you do the podcast. Show some appreciation. And I go, why don't you record your intro when we're not here? And you go, fuck you. It's how you do it. And I go, that's how Marin does it. That's that's exactly right. how that went. Which, but that, <laughs> that to me is uh, a, your co-host is agreeing with. But me. that to me, I'm agreeing too. That's what happened. Well, I'm not that's just what happened, debating yeah. what happened. I'm saying that's like a an argument. That's if you were like, Joe, argument. you got herpes and crooked teeth. I'm like, ah, woo. <laughs> fucking... That's like that wasn't an argument in your head. It was because you reacted poorly to me. Fucking do you consider with you. that ball busting? Being why don't you do the show like this? That's not ball busting. I'm like you're wearing that's shorts. Critiquing. You got you got gross knees, and then you so come that's, back. So that's that's ball that's busting. Ball busting. Yes, I don't want to fight with you. I'm like, you, you know that. I'm shirt. And then you go, you got a fucking if retarded I, hat. Here's the only difference, Mark. And <laughs> I am, I this is work. such a good point that I'm convinced you're going to agree with me. All right. Oh, well, that's some the, Jedi shit. You're the, just trying to trick uh, me. The only <laughs> reason that, th- that, that that exchange about the podcast could be defined as an argument is because List took it to become an argument. When I said was men as ball breaking, your reaction went into argument. So just like if you said, Joe, you got gross knees and your legs are disgusting like you fucking did. (laughs) If I would have reacted and went, you know what, Liz? Fuck you, dude. I fucking came here to do your show. and You're going to fucking attack me now. (laughs) <laughs> then it would have been an argument, but I didn't do that. I went, go fuck yourself. Right. Whereas when I fucked with you, you ah. went right to volume and pointing and yelling, and but, I'm like, all right, list is fucking turning into an but, argument. What about, right, but he didn't know you were fucking with him. Well, he tough just shit. Took, uh, was, uh, dish it out. Learn how to fucking take it a little were, better. You were telling me how to do a show. I, also, those, we were also skipping over was, seven... Herpes jokes and fucking whatever other jokes we made, alcoholism jokes, which were all. I didn't fun make any alcoholism silly. jokes about you. We talked serious about alcoholism. Yeah, we did. Serious. I didn't make any jokes. <laughs> we talked very seriously about it. It's hard to tell when you're joking and serious. It all sort of, they're very similar. I think that's a cop out. I'm just fascinated. He just said he just said that it's come up also from other people. Yeah, well, I heard that it that once. You don't I, take it very well. Well, what happened before was some kid. I'll tell you this story. It was on another podcast. Some kid that was on Bobby's podcast. You're familiar. Yes. This kid went like this. He's like, I'm just so thrilled. And, and Bobby's like, yeah, he was talking about how you're one of his favorite comedians. He's like, you are. I get nervous. Right? You're one of my favorite comedians. And he like was kissing my ass. And then the next second he goes, it's good to be, uh, great to be here with all these great comedians and Joe. And everyone laughed. And I was like, well, you can't, yeah. you can't zing like – you can't talk about how great I am and then be like, he stinks. Right. It's got to be some sort There's of – no consistency. Yeah. And then right. uh, that was that whole – Thing, which I defy anyone to defend. You weren't offended. Here's, you were just like, that's a bad joke. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, this is the thing. I don't get upset with ball busting. I get upset by bad jokes. I'm not saying you've made a bad joke. I did think that what we had earlier was an argument. But I, I, did, will be, I, I will be critical of a bad zing. Like Dan Soto's like, you got small lips. We, have, we do hours of small mouth jokes. I think I have a small mouth. Yeah, but I, I love them all. But I also and then think Soto's you like, like you, have, you have small lips. Yeah. And I'm like, well, I don't have small lips. There you go. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm like looking at your lips now. That's what. Do they look small? small? They are. Yes. A little small. Very, yeah. You got Irish lips. I don't think my lips are. You, you have bigger lips than. Yes. But yours seem. Vito's yours got seem an closer. average lip. That's an. Is average that an lip. average lip? Yeah. I was told this is small. Give me a kiss. I'll give you. No, Vito's top lip is tiny. What do you have? I think <laughs> I'm average. Look at that thing. There's no top. You lip. think our lips are different? Yeah, yours are thinner. All right, I got a thin lip. A thin Lizzie. All here's right. here's Maybe. the point. I could be wrong. I admit when I'm wrong. I think go. I have pretty normal lips. Here's the point. There was no part of me the when you were yelling at me about the <laughs> sure. podcast thing. When you were yelling about the podcast thing, there was no part of me that was angry or thought it was an argument. You know, I was on O and A the other day. We we're talking about the Zimmerman trial, and I the go, what now? The Trayvon Zimmerman <laughs> thing. The Zimmerman. And I go. <laughs> Small lips. Yeah. <laughs> and I go, I go, I want to say something. And I say this with respect for both families. And Norton goes, shut the fuck up. Respect for me. I'll throw my fucking coffee on you. And it was as pointed and aggressive as what I said to you. And I laughed because I'm like, he doesn't really want to. Th- he's making fun of me. And that's the kind of joke I was doing with you where I was like, shut the fuck up. Really? We're going to sit here like it's the Howard Stern show. Well, that's that all I was, was trying a, to do. That also was a misunderstanding. But I, I will say this. If, if I get shit for not being able to take ball busting, I don't think that that's true. But if someone's going to tell me how to do a show that I'm starting at 30 seconds into the first episode, I'm going to take it a little Right. Off, but Joe, it was all I wasn't a misunderstanding. telling you how to do the show. I was joking with you. You were, but and th- this is all make, doesn't make sense because we misheard each other, so we were arguing about a thing that didn't exist. <laughs> I didn't even think we were arguing. I really thought we were fucking around that whole time. I thought you were arguing. Your really? legs. I, yeah, honestly, I did. Your legs are gross. I will stand by that. All right. 
And uh, I don't think you could take a shot very well. Uh, <laughs> 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 it's, uh, we do this a lot. Uh, right, right. But here's the thing. The, the whole point of this was supposed to be that I was just say we had a fake we're going to be friends thing for like six months. Right. Where we were going to – we were like, we got to get drinks. We, uh, I love you. I love I you, would, pal. I wanted to bond and over And then you sum it up and then – <laughs> oh, yeah, that, that is no chance. <laughs> let, me, let me ask you this, yes. Mark and Gary. Yes. Do you want to hear the zing about Joe Shorts or do you want to hear the zing about his tattoos? I prefer the tattoo zing because it's it's it's, it's a, specific to him. That in itself yeah. was a zing. You end sets like that all the time. I think it's wonderful. What did you say? Oh, oh I just got yeah, it. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, I yeah, I do end sets like that. What's that? I do. I know. Do you not like it? Hates it. Oh my god, I think it's horrible. Why? Because what, what are you, Springsteen? You're taking requests. No, I'm not up there saying, guys, do you want to hear my bit that you're so familiar with? I say, guys, I can end with a joke about this or this. What does the audience want to hear more? And if they go, we would rather hear the jokes about politics, it's like, great, then we'll end on a good note here. But don't you think you should just give them the show? No, because I respect my audience, Joe. Oh! Oh, I, think it's, I think it's the opposite. Unlike you, <laughs> who <laughs> performed <laughs> drunk for so many years. <laughs> <laughs> I did not respect many audiences, so I will admit that. Yeah, I mean, I don't know why you hate that. See, t- but to me, now, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Tell me. I am not at all offended by what you just said. I don't care about your opinion <laughs> no, I wouldn't of my want act. you to be offended. But here's the thing. So many people... You care about my opinion of your act. I do not at all. Wow. I don't at all. Why because not? If, that like? Because if I did, <laughs> if I did, I would have been pissed off at what you just said because you're going after my act now. Ooh. I'm not going after your act. Well, that's a little not, bit. Little that's bit. not your act. A little bit. That's the style of which you do a thing. That's not your act at all to me. I don't think of that as your act. That's part of my act. He does that's a, a part of your I act? I do it a lot. Yeah. Oh. My point is, is like you're, if I cared, I'd be angry right now, but I'm not angry, so I obviously don't care. But the thing is, is like that's kind of a below the belt thing to do to like go after a dude what he does on stage. I, so, so I can let me let me just make a tally right now. Okay, uh, you've gone after up. me physically. Right, you've gone after what I do on stage. Ooh, sure, you've told me that I'm an aggressive argument starter in so many words. I didn't say that at all. But yeah, you say start no, you an said argument. You said that I, about me. I attacked you or whatever, and I was starting an argument because you I was said telling that about too me. critical of the podcast. So what 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 is it that you do like about me, Joe? Oh, I think I, first of all, I love your big smile that you have right <laughs> now. I love every minute of this whole thing. I love that we can have this. I love <laughs> how accepting you are to all of this. I feel like I like busting your balls more than most people because you are good at it, with it, you right. enjoy it. I think. Thank you. And uh, I think that I can be critical of you without feeling like someone's going to hate me and we're going to have a fight. No. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I res- no, I mean, no, yeah, we're not going to have a fight. I respect you as a comedian. Um, I, didn't, I don't think of what that thing as a part of your act. I don't think that is your act. I'm not going, this bit sucks, you shouldn't do this. We I think a, that... A whole conversation about you don't say stuff to guys after they get yeah. on stage. <laughs> well, Why a, are you doing that up there? Uh, <laughs> well, that was a question about... And by the way, we, I didn't get a chance to say this. I don't think that's so bad either. Hey, hey, that's like tell a, me about I want to know... He's, a, he's asking a guy who's above him... What, why, would you, why are you doing that? What, what makes you? I don't think that's well, a crazy his thing. His wording was poor. I wouldn't ask. His wording was poor. I wouldn't he, have he, asked right. it, but yeah. I don't yeah. think that's a crazy question. Mm. Yeah, mm. I, I can see that. I, can I just say, I hope I'm not revealing too much here, but uh, we needed two guests for the podcast. We were texting around. You texted Gary. Gary said yes. I texted you. You said yes, but I didn't let him know, and I said, I got good news and I got bad news. <laughs> and Can I say it? You can say whatever. All right, all right. So then, uh, and he said, "All right, well, give me the good news." And I said, "I got a guest." And I said, "He's got multiple specials, got a couple albums, you know, fans." And he's like, "Oh, great! What's the bad news?" I said, "Well, I don't know if you're gonna like the guy." <laughs> <laughs> and then he, <laughs> this is the best part. You write back, "Black guy?" <laughs> Question <laughs> mark. <laughs> That's why I asked him. I <laughs> oh, I thought you were going to say that I wrote I hate him. I didn't think you were going to write the black guy part. Oh, well, that was Jesus. obviously a joke. That was oh. a joke. It was a funny joke. And then I wrote, no, nah, DeRosa. And you went, oh, I hate that guy. This will be great. <laughs> I said, I hate him, but he's the perfect guest. Yes. And it's going great. This is great TV, even though there's no cameras. Well, it's a pull, right? <laughs> yes. Oh, it boy. Is. We got we to gotta, we gotta, wrap, we gotta, we gotta wrap this yeah, up. To continued yeah. offstage. I'll buy you a piece of pizza. All right. Uh, pl- plug, the, plug the dumb album again. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be sure to uh, pick it up. We're all gonna yeah. Fuck well, each I'll other plug it. it. And, uh, <laughs> Anal Greek. How many? Let's let's try. Let's all think long and hard about how many sales will come from this show. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, the you will die. 
Double album comes out late September, early October. Double album. Don't <laughs> blow away by it's that. A, but it sounds, when I say double album, it sounds like it means it's a two hour show. It's <laughs> right. Not, it's right. an hour show that's the, the real album, and then the bonus disc is a, is a mishap recording. Uh-huh. Uh huh. So that's why it's a double. Yeah. Um, it's kind of like a, when you get a CD and it comes with, hey, these are all the B sides. Yeah, the bonus. On the bonus disc. So anyway, so that comes out, um, and you know, watch the new special. It's airing now on Comedy Central, and uh, and uh, what's your Twitter so people can shit on? Oh, you? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> at Joe DeRosa Comedy on Twitter, Instagram, and Vine. Woo! Doing the whole package. Yeah. Internet. There you go. New generation. Gary, yeah. thanks for being here. Uh, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Gary, what do you want to tell us? Ah, uh, geez. So when does this come out? We don't know. Ooh, boy. You don't even know? Oof, possibly never. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to be out of comedy soon. Uh, so. We'll give them your Twitter, your website. Okay, uh, Twitter Irish is exit. at GVeter, and then you can catch me at Irish Exit on Tuesdays. And uh, and Wednesdays we have Hot Soup, Mark and I. Hey, all right. And that's at Irish Exit as well. Great bar, great show. Yeah, and thank and thank you uh, to Stand Up New York for having us. Yes. Here. Stand Up New York on uh, 78. Is it 78th or 77th? 78th and Broadway. 78th and Broadway. StandUpNY.com. Mm -hmm. It's uh, one of the best clubs in the city. It keeps getting better somehow. Better and better. And the staff is great. The management's great. And uh, been here since 1986. <laughs> great club. And uh, appreciate them hosting. And then uh, what? Mark Norm on Twitter? At, at Mark, Mark Norm. Norm. Yeah, one word. And uh, MarkNormanComedy.com. And uh, check out Amy Schumer's dates. You can see Mark with uh, Amy That's Schumer. True. And uh, I'm Joe List. At Joe List Comedy. And I uh, hope you enjoyed listening. Listen to the next one. And uh, I, lo I love all of you guys. Yeah. It's only going to get uh, more wacky and wild. Yeah, yeah. So uh, good night. I love you. Good night and good luck. Has that been done? Oh. <laughs> <laughs>